Congressman John E. Fogarty arrived at the Newhouse office building just south of the Capitol before 9 o'clock, room 1235, the office of the representative from Rhode Island, where the door, unlike many others in Washington, is always open. The working day had already begun for the congressman's staff. Mail sorted, appointments checked, calls made. Routine business of the morning completed by Secretary Grace Byrne and Administrative Assistant George Kelly, both Rhode Islanders. The congressman's official day began at his desk. Ten minutes is just about the time needed to travel from the Capitol to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and the White House. At the west entrance, Congressman Fogarty met his Senate counterpart, Senator Lister Hill of Alabama. Well, I want to say that uh, I'm delighted to have you here at the White House. This is an important day, which we open up this new uh, Dental Research Institute, which you in the House and... Uh, Senator Hill and the Senate have been uh, so active in promoting, or I want to congratulate you for another effort that you've made on this whole question of health, with which you've been so identified for so many years. Well, I thank you very much, and uh, by the looks of your teeth, you have a pretty good dentist. I uh, say. <laughs> but the care of uh, dental hygiene, that it be given the kind of uh, stature and prestige, research, and work that it's entitled to, and along with your work on uh, heart cancer and all the rest, I believe it's most appropriate that we work in this field. So I just want to tell you that I'm delighted to have you down today, and I'm delighted that they're going to open this building. You think we're spending enough money? Well, I leave that to your uh, good judgment, uh, <laughs> John. <laughs> Thank you. The destination, Hyannis Court, Massachusetts. But regretfully and jokingly, he added, no stop scheduled for Hillsgrove Airport that trip. From the White House to the Capitol, Congressman Fogarty enjoys equal popularity and warm personal relationships at both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue. On returning to the Capitol, the long walk up the famous steps give, gives time for thought on the legislative responsibility for national affairs and deliberations of the Subcommittee on Appropriations for Labor and Health Education and Welfare, involving millions of dollars in federal funds. Outside, a cordial greeting from his old friend and colleague, Speaker Sam Rayburn. Congressman Fogarty, this is the committee room where you hold the hearings for appropriations for health, education, and welfare. How do you proceed with this? Well, Virginia, it's, uh, it's quite a job. We spend about two months uh, sitting in this, in this room from 10 o'clock in the morning until uh, 5 or 5.30 at night. Some of the other members of my committee think we, we work too long, but uh, there's quite a bit to it. You see, we first have this uh, book that's in front of you. That this is the bill, committee print. It's a pretty sizable uh, uh, book. And then we have all the justifications uh, piled this high that explains all the details of the uh, appropriations for the Departments of Health, Education, and Welfare and the Labor Department. And then on of it uh, comes uh, some 3,500 pages of uh, testimony that you see in front of me. And then when we complete that, uh, we sit around this table, uh, our committee, and decide how much uh, should be expended in the next fiscal year. And out of it comes the bill, uh, which looks like this, and then uh, a report that is issued by the committee. And I'm very happy to say that uh, for 11 years now, we've had a unanimous report. Uh, there's no politics in this committee because uh, the, these departments affect uh, every human being in our country. There has been an enormous surge in medical research progress since the end of World War II, when the American people turned their attention to improvement of the health of every man, woman, and child in the country. In the whole history of the House of Representatives, no man has done more for the health of the American people than Representative John E. Fogarty. He has been effective because of his truly enormous knowledge of the possibilities of medical research, which he has gained through the long years of study of problems both in the Congress and in private agencies throughout the country. 
The vast program of research in all fields of medicine, supported by the federal government, is centered in the National Institutes of Health at Bethesda, Maryland. This is recognized everywhere as the greatest center of medical research in the world. The distinguished director of the National Institutes of Health is Dr. James A. Shannon. Animals, shops, and the like. New construction down to the left there, that white building, is the National Library of Medicine, that, as you know. Immediately before you is the Division of Biologic Standards and the Dental Institute. Out to the right of the Division of Biologic Standards is this new building that constitutes a, an extension of activities more particularly required by the development of new viral vaccines. Then as you go further to the right, there are two buildings, one that houses the basic science, or will house the basic science for neurology and mental health, and finally a building for the Cancer Institute to house their studies on cancer chemotherapy and the causation of cancer. These will come into being in about two years. Medicine and law have been partners for generations in this land of ours. I expect this to continue into more and more areas, such as poverty, which goes hand in hand with disease and disability, and old age, which has outlived the killer diseases of youth, only to fall heir to the chronic diseases in later years, and ignorance, which prevents the delivery of appropriate health services to all who need them. Only then, when all men have the opportunity to achieve and to maintain their highest potentials, may you and I, may we, the health professions and the lawmakers on a local or state or national level, rest upon our laurels secure in the knowledge that we have done our job faithfully and completely. Hundreds, one night last year, paid $100 a plate to honor him, and thereby, at his behest, help retarded children. Senator Robert F. Kennedy had his own tribute that night. Our family for a long period of time. I think really, uh, when we're talking about mental retardation, we're talking about not just statistics, but we're talking about individuals. We, uh, the first brick for his effort was laid in 1955 when he secured the first federal research fund for research into mental retardation, which amounted to $750,000. And I think we realize what he's done in that struggle. And now, in 1965, the federal government appropriates $120 million for the same research work. And without John Fogarty, that really never would have been done. So I think we all owe a great debt to him, not only people of Rhode Island and people of the state of New York, in my ex-state, the people of the state of Massachusetts, for all across the United States, we owe a debt to John Fogarty. John Fogarty has shown us the way. Either a borrower or a lender be, said Polonius in the Hamlet. We have really borrowed from John Fogarty's vision and his wise labor in pursuit of that vision. We are only the richer for it. To him, we owe the best of debts. The obligation to repay him and the only coin for which he cares, the coin of devoted effort to the cause he has served so well. I am honored to say a few words about an extraordinary public servant, John E. Fogarty. Initially a bricklayer by trade, Fogarty used his time in Congress to build up our nation's investment in health care and research. As chairman of the subcommittee that oversaw funding for health and other public welfare matters, John Fogarty worked to improve health services, their facilities, and research, both here and abroad. 
He understood that increasing funding for the National Institutes of Health would allow us to conduct the cutting edge medical research that continues to improve the quality of life for Americans today. He brought national attention and resources to the challenges of developmentally disabled and mentally ill Americans. He also recognized the importance of libraries in our communities and worked to expand library services. Rhode Island and our nation were extraordinarily well served by the humble congressman from Harmony, Rhode Island, and Americans from all walks of life continued to benefit from his efforts. His example of selflessness, integrity, and decency is a model for all public servants. The John E. Fogarty Foundation for Persons with Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities has built upon the foundation laid by John Fogarty to improve the quality of life for those with disabilities. And I wish you all the best as you continue to carry out his extraordinary legacy and his extraordinary work.